I'm David Berlin with ZDNet. I'm coming to you from Cambridge, Massachusetts, where a panel discussion regarding the gap between Moore's Law and the environmentally conscious idea of computing, green computing that is, is growing. And we had a discussion about that. But standing with me right now is Arthur Howard with ICF Consulting. And Arthur, you guys are working on something that's really interesting with the EPA. It came up in the discussion today. So first, tell us what it is that ICF Consulting does. Uh, ICF Consulting does a lot of support work for the EPA. I work specifically on the Energy Star program, which tests the basically setting energy efficiency specifications for different products. Now we're talking about the Energy Star label that we see on refrigerators, dryers, washing machines, that sort of thing. Right, but as well as white goods in the home like that, we also work on a lot of office equipment. So. EPA just put out new specifications for desktop computers and for imaging equipment, scanners, printers, and those kind of things that are found in offices. They just put out a specification, so what does that specification cover, what's in it, and when can we expect to see PCs that have the sticker on it? Uh, the PC specification actually just came into effect on July 20th of mm -hmm. this year, so that uh, manufacturers are now ramping up and, and working on qualifying products that will earn the Energy Star, and those should be available anytime, I think. And what does it take to earn an Energy Star sticker for a PC? Uh, in terms of PC, basically, there are a couple different requirements. Uh, we look at the standby power, which is the power when the, the computer is actually not on, mm -hmm. and how much is drawing when it's just sitting on the desk. There's a requirement that that has to shut down after a period of, in, of no activity, so that actually goes into a sort of sleep mode. There's a level there, and then actually it specifies active power consumption, where it actually looks at the different hardware and the capability of the system, and then assigns a certain amount of energy that it can use in operation. Does the ability to kind of automatically go into a sleep state, is that more of a user configurable option? Does it just have to have the ability, meanwhile the user can override it, or is it going to be a requirement? It forces the system shut down no matter what the user wants. It's, well, it's actually required in the document that the manufacturer has to have that enabled on shipment. Mm -hmm. So it's something that it is, it is possible to, to be disabled, but it has to be enabled when the product shipped if they want to market it as an Energy Star computer. And in general, uh, you know, what are the power consumption, the actual, you know, amount of power consumption that's required before you get the Energy Star rating? Is it is it below a certain level or right? It would, be a, it, would be a, it would be a maximum. So I believe the the lowest one is around 50 watts. So mm -hmm. so for the sort of lowest configuration PC, you're allowed a ceiling of 50 watts mm -hmm. in the active state. And so that's something that users will know. They go out and they buy a PC and it has the Energy Star sticker on it. They know that it's been certified to be below 50 watts. Right, that's correct. Okay, great. Now, this discussion we just had here in Cambridge had more to do with energy efficiency and green data centers. So is there anything that you're doing with the APA in terms of Energy Star ratings for servers and well, I guess the entire data center? Well, there are a couple things there. Uh, the EPA actually just delivered a report to Congress that was mandated by law for them to look into the energy efficiency of data centers. Mm -hmm. So that report has basically it highlights some of the opportunities for, for creating efficient data centers, some of the barriers and how we might overcome that and how the EPA can help with that whole process. Uh, in that, one of the recommendations is to look at the actual power consumption of the servers themselves, which is what the Energy Star uh, program is going to be doing. So basically, and the idea there is to ultimately create a benchmark where you're looking at the, the actual sort of real-time performance of that server and figuring out how much power you need to reach a certain level of performance. But isn't doing this for servers a bit more complicated than doing it for PCs? It's one thing if I'm sitting at a PC and I'm um, doing some word processing or browsing the web, and then I walk away, and clearly the PC at that point might not be doing much. It's another thing to do the same thing for servers, because especially with today's servers and virtualization, they're doing so many things at, at the same time. How much power is required to do one task versus another? It just seems like it, it would be an impossible cat to skin for you guys. Uh, it is it is very difficult, and uh, but that's really why we're trying to focus on getting a lot of different industry members involved 
and you know a lot of these people that we saw here today to try and help us figure out a, a different a metric that can work for everybody something that really looks you know objectively at the server and says this is what it's doing this is how much power it's using and use that to to define an efficient server so is the ultimate goal an energy star sticker for an ibm server or an hp sticker or does it go on a chip does it go in the data center where in how far will the, you take this for the sticker mm -hmm. for the server i mean this the sticker would go on the server so i mean we're still just investigating this specification. I mean, it's something we want to set, but we have to make sure it's going to be practical and doable. Mm -hmm. And in the end, that's what you would get. You would get a server and come out of the box and it have a little energy star sticker on it. And when it would start to become a buying criteria, if you will, for certain companies when they go out and buy their gear. Right. Like, for example, federal and some federal procurement programs require energy star for PCs because there is a PC mm -hmm. uh, specification that's in effect now. And so you know, in, in the future that might roll into different procurement practices and and that's, you know, that's the point of it is to have it there and so people say this is how we're defining an efficient server. Now there's other gear involved in running a data center. EMC was here today. Uh, are you looking at the same sort of thing for storage arrays and things like that? Uh, that is something we, that we just released a sort of framework document describing the approach to looking at this, the possibility of a server specification. That's one of the questions that's asked in there is, you know, what do we think about storage? Is that something we can wrap in in one specification, specify servers and storage, or is that something, you know, that we should investigate separately? Okay, and how long do you think it is before a specification for servers, storage, and maybe ultimately data centers will be uh, done? Uh, that's a that's a very good question, and uh, I think they're really looking to have some sort of concrete results on that by the end of this year. I'm not sure when that specification, you know, would completely be finalized. One thing that we're looking at for an intermediate step is to look just at power supply efficiency as opposed to so in the beginning just saying here's here's. If this server has an efficient power supply, you know, so you're cutting out a lot of losses in that conversion, then it can earn the sticker and then work towards the much more complicated task, which we talked about earlier, of having a real metric based on performance. Well, Arthur Howard, an analyst with ICF Consulting, working with the EPA, thanks very much for your time today. No problem. Thank you.